My friends, Alice and Chris, they are online. Or on the internet. Is. Yes, just like Instagram, on the line, immediately. Whoop, there we are. <laughs> Allison and I are exactly like Instagram. It's the best uh, analogy. I mean, S- simile. What was that movie? Was, it, was that the intern where he was like, uh, somebody joins Google and He's like, I have this great idea. Like, what if you take a picture with your phone and like, boom, it's immediately on the line. You're like, you just created Instagram. He's like, no, 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 it's totally different. And tries explaining it in a million different ways, but it's really just Instagram. Don't remember the movie. It's good though. Don't even remember who the actor was. Probably could have been any actor. It was like a, you know, mediocre, mediocre movie in the- Wait, I remember, I faintly remember posters for this movie. It was like Anne Hathaway and Robert De Niro or someone like random. Maybe not Robert De Niro. Now we need to find He's out. just like the most established actor I could think of in my brain. Um, okay, so that is definitely a movie in 2015, The Intern. Um, Whether or not it's the movie you're referencing. It is not, because I'm thinking of The Internship oh. uh, with Vince Vaughn, who says something about it being on the line. Is one and of the Owen Wilson, Wilson. On that? Oh. Yeah, Owen, yeah. I mean, they seem to travel in pairs, but. Yeah. How is he doing these days? Owen Wilson? Uh, I don't know. I haven't talked to him. I don't know uh, Hollywood celebrities, Gary. You will by the time we're done with you. (laughs) I mean, we've exhausted my list of Hollywood celebrities now. (laughs) Oh, I don't think there's any Allison questions for the end. Okay. There aren't. It's a problem for future Allison. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a problem for Allison in, in uh, 40, uh, 30, 30 in approximately minutes. 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah. Somebody said something about, uh, oh, I have to find this. Yes. Please bear with me a moment. Should uh, somebody do I had a conversation today? about future Gary yesterday. Ah, here it is. It was like, there was a company survey and it was like, uh, why not spare yourself a prodding ping and take three to five minutes to fill it out now? Your future self will thank you. And I replied, you think much more highly of my future self than I do. No one emojied or reacted in any way. I don't know. Oh, wait, Sometimes that's I true. feel like these people don't get you. It's true. <laughs> I lied because the first response after it that I guess I apparently ignored. Oh, well, that I seems posted- more like you. <laughs> 11.21, yeah, that does. <laughs> I post 11.21, the response was 1123. Of course, two minutes, that's why I missed it. I got distracted. Someone said, I think highly of every Gary Kovar self, past, present, and future. I have to Aww. heard that. Give it a hug. <sighs> a nice thing to YouTube. say. I'm glad I showed up here today and can get distracted by uh, work, I work to hang yeah. out with you all. Let me kill Slack. <laughs> welcome to another episode of Gary Reads His Work Slack Aloud. <laughs> hey, welcome to another episode of Gary Closes a Bunch of Windows. Yeah, I should unplug my external monitor. <laughs> Hold on, I'm I'm, cl- I'm killing things right now. I should have saved that. The way you started off with intros, though, reminded me of um, kind of just old school answering machines and how people would start off leaving messages. I don't know, maybe just my friends. They'd always start off just being with some, like, hello, <laughs> and then like they just like not get to like any of the like point of the call until like. 30 seconds in. I have a friend that I've been friends with for many moons. Um, oh, I've been longer, I've been friends with him for more than half of my life. He became friends when I was 18, so. Um, yeah, in any case, he, um, uh, back in the day, like pre-text messaging, we would leave each other lots of voicemail, you know, as you do, because uh, often I would call and he couldn't answer, and the reverse was also tricky call outs in class or whatever. And the gimmick became like, let's see how long we can talk and not say anything. Uh, but try and time it so like the last thing you say before the voicemail service cuts you off 
is like the topic you are actually calling to talk about. Um, <laughs> so sometimes you could get it out and then it was like so satisfying you would spit up the topic, you know, much like when we finish a sentence here before Zoom cuts us off. And um, you would finish the topic and then it would say, you've reached the maximum recording time, uh, which was all well and good until I think it was like 60 seconds until AT&T was like, oh, you can have five minutes. I didn't know this. And so I left my <laughs> message and finished my topic and nothing happened. And just let it Wait, hang. What's going on? <laughs> so I, I had to talk for four more minutes to fill the time. And then fortunately after that, text messaging came around and um, I would like to interject are, a point. Really before before you, you you're yeah. Uh my No, I wasn't going anywhere. You should yeah. have the whole metaphor. The point I would like to interject is around the feeling satisfied when you complete a sentence before uh, Zoom cuts us off because I feel satisfied when Zoom cuts us off mid sentence before we're able to actually finish the thought that we started before Zoom cut us off. Where was I going last week? I was going somewhere last week and I knew we were at the end and I was really dragging my feet. Um, I don't even remember the topic. Something about space. Yeah, that seems like. (laughs) Our topic today is orbital dynamics. (laughs) Um. (laughs) The thing is that I'm I'm fairly sure that's actually accurate. It's it's also it really? it, it's it's the default answer for all things Gary, but also I think it's not wrong. I um, yeah, yeah. But I not in the two D way. Like you keep it exciting. It's true. I mean, you, you there's, have more of the latest of, space news. Than... Yeah, there's lots of there's lots of space things that that are new and original. If I shared everything I was excited about about space happenings, I don't think anyone would ever talk to me. That would be a Twitter feed that I would read. Would it really? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I follow some. Like, I don't know what that says about me. But... <laughs> that I am, I am amazed at how much information they get. Some of them, it's their job, you know, they're reporting on the space industry. But some, I'm just like in awe of the things that they research and find out. Like, oh, well, this is it, fascinating. Dot dot. And it's, you know, generally it is, but often there's like a lot of context that gets to the point that's fascinating. And it doesn't translate well to Twitter, but there are some nerds out there who hmm. really appreciate their hard work, make my life better, or at least spacier. I have I, my brain is full of D and D things uh, these days. That's that's all my brain is full of. That's the only thing I can talk about anymore. <laughs> People ask you about something else, and you're just yeah. Like, no, it's totally it just it's just going to go straight there. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like, I keep thinking about it. I keep having this thought, like, so when I started my career in uh, web development, Mm. there was no such thing as all of the things that are out there. I mean, so, okay, on a and d timeline, when I I started (laughs) my career in web development, D&D was at, like, three, like, third edition, I think, and everybody hated it. Um, and nobody was playing or it wasn't the thing like it wasn't the thing that people were talking about only like really extreme nerds in like back alleys were like rolling dice um, like literally like yeah. that, that's <laughs> such an amazing well, calculating picture. orbital yeah. velocities yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah. Um, <laughs> today like as of like last year or two years ago um, a f- there is like an officially sanctioned place to like sell homebrew materials um, and so in the last two years, there's been an explosion of like indie developers and indie uh, like d d creators. And like the term professional dungeon master has emerged as an actual profession. Had I known uh, when I uh, started my career in web development uh, that professional dungeon master would someday be a thing like an actual occupation that you could make money doing, I think I would have made a few different career choices. <laughs> I'm pretty sure professional dungeon master existed when you started web development, but then something entirely different. Solid. You'd be okay. Signing up for a much different job position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that's probably fair. But it's never too late to become a pro- professional dungeon master. 
You say that, I, and I, I, I see that this is the thing. This, this is the thought that of has all been, the professions. It's not like you're coming. No offense, Gary, but it's not like you're saying I'm going to be an astronaut. It, it, it's yeah. Uh, that this is the thought that has been like <laughs> ha, that I've been thinking about like for the last several weeks. Like seriously, like um, I, it, it would be awesome. I would love to do it, but I don't know that I could do it at the scale that I currently am. Like. Like it would need to be equivalent to to the amount of financial stability that I have now, and I don't think that professional dungeon master is going to be equivalent to where I am right now. No well, matter how like hard I it, work. If it does, it would require like a trade off of some sort. Like you'd be traveling a bunch, or you'd be right. like, yeah, I'd have to turn myself. I'd have to turn myself into Matt Mercer, uh, which charming individual, I'm sure. Uh, that's not who I am. Also, like, he and everybody else that does Critical Role and everybody else that does a lot of these, like, D&D podcasts are, like, they have a side gig, which is voice acting. And I could totally do that. Like, I, I get that, like, I have an awesome life. I could probably, like, sell myself on Fiverr or something. But, like, I, how do you break into to, to voice acting as a, you know, early 40-something nobody who has no background in acting, in professional acting? I don't know. Question. Yeah. Well, that's a different. That's that's a fair question, but I don't think it's uh, an insurmountable. It's different task. than than the professional dungeon master thing, though. But no, but you're talking about like to get this thing, it makes sense to pair it with something else, right? Yeah. That I can also do from home or blah blah right. blah, blah. Like, I um, the answer is I don't know, but um, I think you should explore it a lot more. Sort of a say, rhetorical a question. Thing. Yeah. There's well, I know it's a rhetorical question, but I'm going to inject my damn opinion. <laughs> so, so what, so what you no, I do. I mean, I, I am. I, I do think that I, at some point I would like to to have some sort of material uh, presence on uh, DMs Guild, which is where all the things are. Mm-hmm. Career changes are awesome. I know we're I'll the make another one. <laughs> we're pretty bad enablers in that category, though. I mean. Because we both did it, so we're just like, yeah. <laughs> so why not do it again? <laughs> no, there's um, I'll look it up. There's um, a website a friend mentioned to me a while ago. Um, she is forty something, but she has the voice of a Muppet. She always has. Oh, nice. Um, so. Like, people will call and be like, can I speak to your mom? And she's just like, nope, this is me. Like, this is just how I sound. Um, but she put a voice reel or something on this site, and then people can hire you. I don't know. Mm. It might be something worth looking into, if nothing else. Just for fun. If, if um, I just feel like making an example reel would be, like, kind of hilarious. Yeah, yeah. My dad did a um, – my actually, my parents did a, a – some sort of a voice voice acting class um, before we saw them. So like a year ago, I think. Um, and they had like, they had demo reels that they sent. Um, my, or my dad had a demo reel that he sent me and my mom didn't send it. But then they, but then they, they rehearsed for us their voices that they did for the characters they made. Uh, and it was like for like animated characters or whatever. So it was like s- silly sort of voices. And and it was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. <laughs> but no, it's totally a thing. And like the idea of the class too was so that at the end of it, you do have this like demo reel that you could potentially like show places. So yeah, it's a mm-hmm. it's a thing. I can see how that would go hand in hand with D and D. But I guess then there's also the question of like, if you ever did it professionally, like, would that take the fun out of it for you? I don't know. It's hard to say, right? Yeah. It kind of depends on if it, it's like that hustle <laughs> right. that goes along with it. If someone was just like, this is yours for the same amount of money you make now. Yeah. You right. have stability. and just be like, oh, I don't have to hustle to get there. It, it, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I think that, I think that, I mean, I, game development uh, and, and creative writing but all but particularly like um like world building type stuff is always stuff that i've it's stuff i've been interested in in a really long time um 
and it's it's not a that's not a muscle I get to flex in my current day job. Yeah, you're the people to ask. What's what replaced SimCity? What replaced SimCity? SimCity two thousand. I mean, like the SimCity series. Like it hasn't just the Sims. The Sims is still around. Yeah. People are still like really into but, it. Yeah, but the Sims it's a is different like the thing. Same as like yeah. city management. Yeah, um, I think the idea of city management game sort of died um, because. I guess people thought that like it peaked at SimCity 2000 and then they didn't play anything else like that was like that. I don't know. I mean, there's all sorts of, there's all sorts of like, uh, well, like there's Roller Coaster Tycoon, which I believed was derivative of Railroad Tycoon. And then after that, there's just everything Tycoon. Like there's just Tycoon for... Lemonade Stand. (laughs) Yeah, Lemonade Stand. There's like, I, I, yeah, it's... And like those things are totally unrelated. And the idea of like a tycoon in any other thing, like, I mean, even roller coasters, but like, like, you know, like yeah. the tycoon thing, like the word no longer has any meaning. Yeah, yeah it's like CEO. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a dog and, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's, he's very needy today. Um, I, I, I don't think that the Tycoon series, though, is equivalent. I mean, I guess, like, the, the, sort of like I guess the mechanics are sort of. But, but there's something about, like, a city where there's, yeah, you have to do, like, you know, uh, resource management with, with money and whatnot and, like, providing services. But there's something about, like, connecting to these, like, this mass of people that was, I mean, like, Railroad Tycoon, love it. But it's a totally different, but all wax. Like, you're trying to destroy someone else. It's not, like... You know, SimCity, you were competing against yourself. The other games, you're competing against other tycoons. You know, it's a different. Was Roller Coaster Tycoon was was not competing against someone else. That was yeah, that's fair. Was, was Rise making... of Nations after SimCity? I feel like it was. Did you ever play that game? I never played Rise of Nations. It's like um, similar to SimCity, but you basically like build up your cities, and then other cities will be building up, and then they will attack you. So you have to mm. be prepared for them when they eventually attack but as it's going on through you start in like whatever ancient time and then it progresses through the eras so as it progresses you get more technology and better um, yeah i was gonna say i was gonna say civilization but civilization is not really the same thing either yeah Yeah. well all right (laughs) that concludes our computer game reviews from the late 90s (laughs) <laughs> yeah, to, to answer your question, Gary, I don't know that anything has taken the place of SimCity. Okay, that's fine. I can live with that answer. You can still play SimCity, though. <laughs> I always like to make What are you doing? Chris gave me permission to play SimCity, so playing SimCity. I, I, I recently, we recently got a, a copy of Crossover um, so that we could play old uh, Windows games. Um, and I haven't figured out networking so that you can play network games, but like, it's pretty amazing. That's awesome. Like being able to like play these old games and like they work like fine. Yeah. I was just talking about the old, um, I don't know, there was a company called The Learning Company and they had like a bunch of games that were not shockingly about learning. And my mom was just like, anything by the learning company, my mom would buy into for a computer game. She was just like, this is at its heart, like good. From the learning company. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How could, how could it be bad? How could, but how then could it was, it was like all about like, so it was like outnumbered, which was all about math and like whatever. There was like a mystery one. And then there was this one with like physics and you'd like hook up the different battery generators. But someone tweeted about it yesterday or the day before with a little screen cap. And I went like, <gasps> It, like brought back that feeling where you just have that nostalgia where you're like I remember that <laughs> so good I remember trying to show my kids uh the original Oregon Trail oh because <laughs> uh, I found a, I found like an emulated copy somewhere and I still have it and like trying to like get them excited about it and they kind of got it but like not to the extent that like like when I was playing computer games and that was like the most amazing game <laughs> And it really wasn't. Uh, it really wasn't the most amazing game. It was so easy to like, oh, you just be the banker and you buy a whole bunch of crap and you have lots of money so that when you need to ford the river, you can ford the river and it's fine. Like, Is that how you win it? Yeah, for sure. 
Get, you pick the richest op- occupation, then you have then you just have money, and you have like three axles. So like when your axle breaks, just replace the axle. Like it's mm-hmm. yeah. Or you could be the carpenter, uh, which is a little bit tougher because you don't have as much money, but he can actually fix the broken parts on your wagon. And I think fording the river works a little bit better when you do that uh, uh, as as a as a carpenter because you know he knows what the fuck he's doing. But yeah, you'd be the bank. The banker was the easiest video, one. Our video game review from. <laughs> well, on this topic, our um, our sprint naming convention this year on my team at work is um, video games. So we are finishing mm. up Sprint Contra and heading into Sprint Double Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Isn't it cool? Yeah, I I I kind of like it, and then I realize my misspent childhood wasn't quite as misspent as I thought. As I'm like, I've never heard of that game. I wasn't as cool as I thought when I was a kid. It definitely, which is not saying an awful lot because I didn't think it was a very cool game. So whatever. But like the anticipation of the next sprint, really like. Yeah, I don't that know. definitely. It definitely. I have like, no anticipation like, for the next sprint. I know it raises that adrenaline. It's um, it, you know, and it sort of depends on the client. Some clients we still use the numbering scheme. And this is your you know twenty dot whatever this fourth sprint or third sprint of the year twenty twenty. But I don't, other clients that are more, you know, like, hey, we're just writing software here. It's not like, you know, whatever. We're not doing anything important. Um, there, those are the fun ones where we can just like call the sprint what it is. You know, it's Contra. <laughs> we're going to deploy Contra this week. That's fun to say and fun to do. And and I'm not deploying this week actually. I'm deploying it uh, the week after. Uh, I don't know when I'm deploying it. You don't care. I don't know why it matters. It doesn't. Yep. That's my favorite part when someone's telling a story and they get hung up about like, wait, it happened on Tuesday. Wednesday? Tuesday. And you're like, it doesn't really matter. Just get to the story. <laughs> yeah. 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 I feel like that's a lot of meetings I have. I start talking and I'm like, oh, but if you look at this namespace and oh, and the reason we did that and um, and I can just see people like, on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's an it's alibi more... for like some sort of court case, you don't need to be clear on what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I although if, if, you, if it was if it was a court case and you're on the and you're on the witness stand and you're like, it's Wednesday. No, Wednesday? Tuesday? <laughs> that is would probably be a bad thing. <laughs> Sir, you were under Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> Just like generally confused. <laughs> Sir, don't they go through this with you beforehand? Yeah, but, oh, but now I don't remember. Mm. Do we have a topic? It's 20 minutes in. Oh, yeah. We should probably get to a topic. Maybe not. <laughs> I mean, we could just not. Who knows? I'm just point. wondering. The topic this week is lacrimator. Lacrimator. Mm-hmm. L-A-C-R-Y-M-A-T-O-R. <laughs> T-O-R? T-O-R. Okay. I don't know why I didn't hear you say R, but I, like, I said R-Y. Time, and so I heard the O, and I'm like, Lord. Is, it, is there an R in the end or not? Lack. <laughs> silent R, no. <laughs> L-A-C. R-Y. M-A-T-O-R. Mm-hmm. Well, a mator is <clears throat> a machine of some sort. Is it what a mate. of some sort? It's a mate. Oh. It's oh. a machine of some sort. A mechanical thing. So this is a machine that lacrimates. <laughs> or lacras? Lac- I don't know. I'm not really sure. Lacrims? No, lacries. <laughs> Lacries? Oh, this is a machine that makes that crappy water with like the hint of flavor in it. Like La- bubbly water? Lacrimator? Lacrimator. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a stretch. <laughs> Sorry. People really love LaCroix. I don't get it. I mean, it's okay. I, I think Whatever. I think I had it once, and it was like, "This is fine." Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there's a hidden I mean, flavor that we didn't try that that's the stellar one, like Starburst. If I want a hint of flavor, so that's I can't the one identify. Wants. I'll stick with tap water. <laughs> like what? what I, I will say. Uh, now I need. Like now I need to find it. Uh, I will say that there is the greatest uh, music video uh, 
about LaCroix by a gay rapper. Um, uh, yes, Big Dipper. Uh, it's his song, LaCroix Boy. It's fantastic. That sentence is everything I wanted it to be. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Like when the sentence started, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> I had no idea where we were going. <laughs> yeah. But it's I'm a website. It's a mystery it. novel in a sentence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It will be in the show notes. Oh, I should hope so. Yeah. It's, it's definitely um, an experience. Lacrimator. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to say that it had something to do with lactose. Um, but where I went when uh, you added the mater and you said that the mater was uh, having to do with some sort of like machine or robot was not a place I wanted to continue going. So. <laughs> um, I feel like that's valid. Yeah. So you're not thinking like a like a machine that compresses cheese or anything, what you're saying? That was not the thought that I had. No, no. Mm. Okay. Let's not keep guessing the thoughts. Yeah, that. let's we can just stop <laughs> that I'm good. that I'm good. <laughs> that line of questioning can just end. <laughs> <laughs> Is this um, something a farmer uses? Line um, of questioning. <laughs> there's sorry, a, there's a pin curious. in it. There's a pin in that. We're just gonna Put that pin there, and they're gonna hold it there. Okay, they're just gonna stay there. I have been watching Remove the, the show pin Tiny when not Houses recording. on Netflix recently. Mm -hmm. You've been watching what? Um, Tiny, Tiny House. House. Tiny, Tiny House. Houses. Okay. I don't know what it's called. It's a. It's. I mean, look for Tiny House on Netflix if you want to watch it, but don't waste your time. Um, I think I've watched four episodes. Um, and I'm sure this was like a show that was cool several years ago when the tiny houses were a thing. So now I have, there's no damn good reason for me to watch this other than. Well, I remember, I remember like, when this came out on Netflix. Yeah. 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 I never so watched it. It exists. It seems that's, that's my review. Yeah, it exists. Um, Are you out of other things on Netflix to watch? No, I don't know why I ended up. up or do you just, Netflix. you just needed something that's like, this is easy to watch. There's no plot. We just no... finished Better Call Saul. So oh. I was like, I would wow. highly recommend Asian dramas. They are amazing, or or Asian like uh, like young adult comedy, romant romantic comedy type shows. Uh, they're very much worth watching. We just finished one called Cheese in the Trap, uh, and Cheese in the Trap was about this uh, sociopathic rich son of a wealthy businessman who manipulates everyone around him and is the main male love interest for the entirety of the series. Um, and about midway through the show, we're like, okay, this guy is horrible and she's still with him. And the, and the show is about the girl, right? And she's still with him and she knows he's horrible. So maybe this is really a story about mental health and about how uh, like sociopaths are people too or something, you know, like how we're gonna get to the, at, at the end, there's gonna be some sort of moral or there's gonna be some resolution to this. There wasn't at all <laughs> it just continued in the same vein and there's always this other dude or at least from fairly early on there's this other dude who's like who used to be friends with him but then there was a thing and his hand got broken and he blamed the, the sociopath dude for his manipulative stuff that sort of led to it um and he was a piano player he's a really good piano player and the, his broken hand caused him to not be able to play and yada yada, yada. he's he's a much nicer and and more compatible individual and so you're the entire series you're you're thinking oh well they're going to get together eventually nope that doesn't happen either i mean it's, it's it leaves so many things just hanging and you keep waiting for something good to happen and it all just wraps up exactly the same as it started every episode you just keep waiting for something different to happen like what, what, maybe this Nothing. time maybe you're this not time. selling yeah. it man i don't it's, it's, this it's, sounds too much like politics i'm not interested <laughs> <laughs> It's it's funny though because um, you watch enough of of like K dramas or like um, or or uh, Chinese uh, dramas or, or, or soap opera type things, um, and there's definitely like a pattern. There's a formula, and they all follow the exact same formula. There's always like the pretty rich boy and like sort of uh, rugged uh, like street 
uh, smart, but also really, really attractive, like other guy. And there's all, they're always just always some sort of rivalry and the girl's always like oscillating between the two of them and like going to her friends, what should I do? And blah, 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 blah. And like, um, they're always, always like what she should do is always like tremendously obvious, but she never does it. She never sees it. You're like screaming at the team. It's, 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 it is more compelling than it sounds. <laughs> I, as you explain this, like, I think I know why I went to this tiny house show when it popped up on Netflix. Um, because the last episode of Better Call Saul was, like, somewhat intense and left me thinking. And then I uh, was like, I need something mindless. Uh, and reality TV, I don't know there's much more mindless than reality TV. Yeah, it's very it's like rare. Where people start talking, and I, I, I can like literally see them talking, and I have no idea what they're saying. So I'm like, I just want to see what kind of cool shit they put in this tiny house in here. I should just fast forward. That's what I, I should watch the last ten minutes of every episode tonight and be done with the whole damn series and never revisit it. It's very rare. Like in in other shows, like American television, like you watch, you, 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 it's pretty common that you can watch an episode and be like, yeah, that was really upsetting, and now I need to go to bed. Um, with like K dramas and 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 Chinese dramas and and Asian soap operas in general, like you, it's very rare that you get to the end of it and be like, "That was really upsetting," and I'll and I'll I, I'm like emotionally affected. It's like, no, that was fluff, and that's okay. Like, <laughs> that was completely mindless and and like really kind of dumb, and I'm okay with that. Like, I'm good with that. So Are we started they... a, we started a new one that's even more ridiculous, and I will have to uh, report back uh, when we've gone through a couple episodes. Are they um, generally um, dubbed in English, or is it yeah. subtitles? Yeah, no, uh, subtitles, subtitles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, like, the translation thing is often, like, I don't think that's what they said. <laughs> they, they seem to say uh, gosh a lot. I don't think that's, that's what that translates to the same thing that gosh means to me. Goodness. I was listening, I, was I listening to? I was watching some sort of... Um, Spanish performance and I was like oh I wonder and I turned on subtitles and it just said Spanish singing and I was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is not helpful <laughs> I was like I know that <laughs> just curious what the lyrics meant oh when uh when my the last 10 minutes we've we've barely touched on uh lacrimator I think it's time uh, it's time well I mean I guess we could continue uh, touching on maybe we'll just never know yeah I mean but uh, maybe maybe we will, and and maybe we'll we'll talk about it in the remaining uh, six minutes and fifty seconds, uh, since we don't have any Allison questions. Yeah, I thought there we were just more stare at each other. We could just stare at each other that. awkwardly for like the last minute. <laughs> Silence. Yeah. Um, lacrimator. <laughs> I was saying it a bunch of different ways. I was like lacrimator, and I'm like, that's not right at all. Um, it's a substance that irritates the eyes and makes you cry. So, like, there's a chemical oh. in onions. So, when you cut an onion, that yeah. the chemical is a lacrimator. The chemical is a lacrimator, yeah. right? The onion is not That's, a lacrimator, but the, the chemical that, that <laughs> but the chemical that yeah. that hey. onion. So, like, tear gas is also a lacrimator for them. The obvious one. So, uh, is that is 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 like your the, your tear duct? like a the word for that a word that sounds like lacro something like is is there a reason why it's lacrimator and not like i don't know tear causey chemical <laughs> yeah so, it's not scientific number one <laughs> well there's like lacrimal fluid lacrimal which fluid. comes from like the lacrimal gland okay um and so that's the gland receptors are activated the gland is what's stimulated to produce those tears. Okay. And during my research, I found out that there are three types of tears. Sorry. Emotional, reflex, and basal. Or basal? I don't know how you say that. B-A-S-A-L. What what, uh, what I what is basal? Basal. Basal. So that's just like your normal, like you're healthy, your cornea is like doing its uh, work and like you're you don't have dry eyes basically and so because there's three different kinds there like what can you physically look and see and determine based on something what kind they are 
Um, the velocity at which it exits, or I don't I mean velocity of which velocity. It wow, how are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I I'm thinking it. about like <laughs> I pictured an anime with like yeah yeah an anime with tears just. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, I think you they might be able Allison to know everything about all. Of yeah. This <laughs> just like oh, think... you know this, so you must know all of this other stuff. No, you just you looked up a Wikipedia page before every show. <laughs> I did go down the rabbit hole about this because I was like, this is kind of interesting. But there's like a yeah. lot more on on it than I was capable of <clears throat> science-wise. Because I was just like, once um, you start getting into like, I don't know, immunoglobulins also, and like chemicals, I'm kind of... <laughs> did you end up on this topic because of the survey posted on Twitter about crying at work? No, I didn't. Or that was just a um, coincidence? It was uh, a crossword puzzle clue. Ah. And then I heard heard it used on Bon Appetit Test Kitchen. Mm. So that oh. combined, I was like, okay, like what are we talking <laughs> about here? <laughs> I've heard this word twice, so it's time. Hmm. Although I did take that study about crying at work, so as did I. I don't. I was not aware of this uh, thing about crying at work. Oh yeah, I'll try to I'll try to find a link and post it. It was just like a Google survey for someone who was giving a talk on it. Hmm. Like, do you cry at work? Talk. Have you have you cried at work? Like, yeah, yeah. It's basically like, like that, as well as people's perception. Like, if one of your coworkers did, if you were a manager and someone came to you and was crying, would that change your perspective? Hmm. Has it changed your perspective? I mean, I think there's likely to be some bias in there, but I basically think her results are going to be like a lot more people have cried at work than are letting on. <laughs> I, yeah. It was also like your favorite place to cry. Yes, that was a good one. Like at my desk, in the bathroom, in the stairwell. <laughs> in the stairwell, yeah. I know that was, that was <clears throat> definitely my favorite one where I was like, where is my favorite place to cry when I'm in like an actual workspace? <laughs> I just put desk because like hammock wasn't an option <laughs> wasn't an option hmm. and i think in the notes there was like like is there anything else you want to add and i basically was just like ba 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 patriarchy <laughs> <laughs> i i hope that um she tweets um at least some like generalized statistics from it i'd be curious to see since i don't know what conflict will be given at so we'll likely not hear anything more about it um, but it'd be interesting to, to see statistics and see uh like to your point yeah i mean there's gonna be bias because it's self-identified people that are filling out the survey you know um, well i feel like if you're a manager are you gonna just full out say being like yeah it would affect my perspective of someone i'm like maybe i don't know <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah yeah that's an interesting point but I've never really been in a manager space in that way. So at least not in the tech industry. So. Yeah. As a, as a remote employee, I think it'd be, uh, it's easier for those things to be invisible to like mm -hmm. uh, doing what we do. I don't know if I cried on call with you or not, Chris, but I damn sure did after a call with you early in my web dev days. So. I do not remember you crying on a call with me, so maybe it was after, and I made Gary cry. No, you did not make me cry. The, w the work itself made me cry. That makes more sense. I, uh, that adds up. I, I definitely <laughs> cried earlier this week about work, but it was not at work. It was, uh, it was sort of a post-stress cry kind of thing. And also, like, I'm a horrible dad because I like had to work through D&D &D instead of being able to do this thing with the kids. I'm so sad that that um, that whole situation had to happen to you, Chris. Like, yeah, I, I mean, it, it really in retrospect, me... in retrospect, I could have pushed harder about the day that we were doing it, and should have, um, because I knew that that was the thing that we were doing. Like, if I did, if I made, if I forced it to be on Tuesday, I think it would have solved. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. 
You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.